come on, if you need a fresh fire this morning, give him some praise. Oh, come on, offer him a sacrifice this morning of praise. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Woo, well, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, isn't God good? Well, come on, aren't you thankful for his grace and his mercy? You know, I was, it's been on my heart the past couple days, and I had to look it back up this morning. Brother Green caught me. I couldn't remember the whole story, but the, the story of Gideon, and the Lord told him that he would be a champion of the Israelites, and the Israelites had been captured by the Midianites for seven years. And Gideon had an army of 32,000 people, and God told him that his army was too big. Now, can you imagine that? God told him that his army was too big, that what he had, his strength, his wisdom, his knowledge, was too much for God to be able to use. And so he cut it down. He lost 20,000 people in a day that were too afraid to fight. And God cut his army down from 32,000 people down to 300 men who would fight. He took this mighty, magnificent army and cut it down to 300 men. Now, you would think that God would want all the strength. You would think that God would want all the men, all the wisdom and the knowledge. But what God was doing, he was getting Gideon down to the point that when the miracle happened, when they won victory, when they destroyed the Midianites, they knew that it was God and God alone that gave them the victory. They knew that God orchestrated my footsteps. They knew that God was their strength. And this morning, it may feel like everywhere you look, you're losing ground. Everywhere you look, you're losing ground. You're losing strength. You're, you're losing money. You're losing face. Your job's going down. Everything you have is going down. And you say, God, I don't understand why I'm losing everything. God, I don't understand why I'm getting down in this pit. And yet it is God getting you into a position so when he gives you the victory, you can say, I know it was God and God alone. It was his strength. God is getting ready to move in your life this morning. God is getting ready to move. Don't look at the circle. Don't look at how it looks to your natural eye, look through the spiritual and see that God is getting you into position this morning. Oh, come on. I feel the presence of the Lord. Somebody give him some praise. Come on. Give him praise for the victory that's coming. Jesus, Jesus. We're so glad everyone showed up on this Sunday morning. Turn to your neighbor, shake their hand, greet them, and let's have church this morning. I've heard people talk about heaven and tell of its beauty so rare. So one day he gave me a title to a mansion in that land so fair. It was given to me without money. It cost my dear Savior his life. He died on the cross without Jesus has gone to prepare. I cannot touch it, blood cannot harm it, and it never will need a repair. The termites can mar its foundation, for on the rock of ages it stands. I feel it is almost complete and ready for me to move in. Signed and recorded the day that you saved me from sin. My name was engraved in gold letters in the Lamb's book of life, safe within. I'm an heir to that mansion in glory when this distant life. Jesus has gone to prepare. I cannot touch it, but cannot harm it, and it never will need a repair. The termites can bar its foundation, for on the rock of ages it stands. I feel it is almost complete and ready for me 
to the sea. Oh, I hold a clear title to a mansion that Jesus had gone to repair. I cannot touch it, but cannot harm, and it never will need a repair. The termites can bar its foundation, for on the rock of ages. Praise God. You know, we're going we're gonna to move into that new mansion one of these days. And it's going to be a wonderful time. Hallelujah. But you know, there's a new name written down in glory. Hallelujah. I was once a sinner, but I came part of the receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robed angels sing the story, a sinner has come. heavens open and I saw that my name was written down there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white robe and the sin story a sinner has come home there's a new name written down The book is written, saved by grace, oh, the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know by the blood I am made whole. For there's a new day written down in glory, and it's mine, oh, yes, it's mine. And the white robe angels sing. Forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never born to roll. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you remember when your name was written in the book of life? Praise God. I, I remember that day or that night. Hallelujah. And I like to talk about it sometimes. And I like to tell people, so sometimes they don't like to hear what I'm saying, but anyhow, you get used to that after a while, you just keep on talking. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's a city where the Lamb is the light. There's a country far beyond the starry sky. There's a city where there never comes a night. If we're faithful, we shall go there by and by In the city where the Lamb is the light In the city where the Lamb is the light In the city where there come a no night I'm a man to go over there and will bring the joy in there I am going where the Lamb is the light Here we have a 
our days of sunshine, but we know that the sun which shines upon us now so bright will be changing clouds of rain until we go to the city where the Lamb is alive. In the city where the Lamb is alive. In the city where there come a no night. I'm a mansion over there and went free from toil and care. I am going where the Lamb is alive. There the flowers bloom forever and the day shall be one eternal day without a night. And our tears shall be forever wiped away in that city where the Lamb is alive. In that city where the disappointments all the while and our fondest hopes but meet with bitter blight though by day we will never smile in that city where the lamb is the light in that city where the lamb is the light in that city where there come a no night I'm a man to know Let sunlight fade and twilight bring its gloom. Not a shadow can my blissful soul affright. For I know that up in heaven there is room. In that city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where the Lamb is the light. In the city where the come a no night. I've a mountain over there. And I am going where the Lamb is alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, come on, if you know that to be true, give him some praise. Come on, aren't you ready for that day? Hallelujah. Woo, Hallelujah. Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can be seated this morning if Taylor and the girls will come up and prepare to see Taylor and sing Taylor and Jillian. Come on, give them some honor this morning. And Sister Donna, if you'll come and get Hallelujah. ready as well. Oh, come on, give them some more honor than that this morning. Voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every Once again, just who I am because I need to know.
Come on, give them some honor this morning and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, continue to worship the Lord this morning with Sister Donna.
Good morning, everybody. Let's stand if you can, if you're physically able, and amen. Let's give the Lord, oh, a shout of praise this morning. Oh, 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 is that your shout? Come on, hallelujah. Come on, put a praise in your mouth, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to share a story with you real quick, and then we're going to pray for needs. But we had a, a lady years ago, none of you know her, years ago. And she was quiet as a church mouse, wouldn't hardly do, just say nothing. And Maddie was playing ball, she's a little bitty. And I was on one field, and all of a sudden I heard this commotion, run, run. I'm thinking, what in the world? So I just had to walk over to the other field. And that was that little church woman that was quiet as a mouse. That was coaching third base and was hollering, run, run. And I thought, man, if we can holler for a ball field or a ball game, surely we can give the Lord a big shout of praise. Come on now. <laughs> well, I'm not going to keep you up too long, but uh, we got a good victory report. Watch this. Monday and Tuesday of this week is Brother Green's last treatment. Hallelujah. Come on. Whew. I'm so thankful for how the Lord orchestrated that. Uh, this week, week two, I plead the blood on it, but my wife has not said, my neck is killing me. Hallelujah. Week two of healing. And Zach wasn't prayed up when we prayed for him because it jumped on him. Now he's got a bad neck, so. <laughs> Brother Green, Sister Green, Sister Green's mother, been praying for her. They thought they was going to lose her. Fever got sky high, had to ice her down. Long story short, we've been praying. Doctors been working. They sent her home. She's at home out of the hospital. Don't tell me God's not hearing what we're praying and what we're doing. Someone say amen. And then we got a phone call. The Sheltons weren't here. They went for a checkup, Sister Joanne. They put her in the hospital. We prayed. You've been praying. Uh, she worked in the garden all day yesterday. I believe that's right. And then she's up here singing this morning. <laughs> Come on, can I get a witness? Don't tell me it don't serve, amen, to serve the Lord. It pays. It just, yes. it pays. And then we prayed for Maddie to have favor and, uh, in a situation. And this week, she got hired as a third grade teacher at Zenith High School, at Zenith School. Amen. And then one thing, she wanted to come back to Kennett because she didn't want to live with me and her mom. And we, we kind of looked at her. We said, well, we really don't want, we want you to move back to Kenneth, but we didn't want you moving back in. <laughs> now, that was me and my, you know. So anyway, anyway, a house fell open, immaculate, beautiful, right in her price range where she could rent it. So she got her job. She got her house. And it's favor because you've been praying. And Hallelujah. So let's pray. Let's pray for Justin, Justin and Mallory Klein. I talked to her father-in-law, and they said that, you know, they just don't know what's going to happen with the baby. She's pregnant, and they're going to let it go full term, and they just don't know. Well, I'm, we're asking God to give her a miracle and give that baby a miracle. Yes. I want that. We, we're declaring that baby's going to live and yes. be healthy. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Donna and Imogene Wells needs prayer. Mark Dollins needs prayer for healing. Vicki Hamlet needs prayer for healing. Chelsea Mitchell, amen, she, they sent her home, but the blood continues to come up in her lungs and they have to drain that. We're praying for that blood to be severed and that thing to stop and her to be healed and her to live in the name of Jesus. And we're praying for Tony Adair this morning, speedy recovery. We're also praying for Larry Gargas, speedy recovery. 
I want to remember Shay. She's sick this morning. Also, unspoken, but I want us to pray for Trey Northington. That's Chastity's husband. God knows. Amen. But I'm telling you, I'm, we're going to pray for him this morning. Also, my mother-in-law, she's sick this morning. Betty Cordell, we want to pray for her. How many of you got something you need the Lord to touch this morning? You got something? Amen. Join hands with somebody beside you. Come on, Brother Green. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost over these needs. Come on. And amen. Come on. Join that hand. Let's pray. Come on, church. Let's believe God for a breakthrough, for healing, for deliverance. Come on. Ain't nothing too hard for the Lord. If God raised Sister Joanne up, he'll raise you up. Come on, if he'll give Maddie favor, he'll give you favor. Come on, can I get a witness? Amen, let's pray in the Holy Thank you, Pastor. Pray with me, church. You know the needs we have here, we bet. We've mentioned them. And you have needs that you probably uh, just don't want to say, but Lord, here we go. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for our Savior and our Christ Jesus, Lord Jesus. We thank you that he has come to heal us, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you, are, you are the provider, O oh Lord, in this world. You created us, O oh Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you for the... For the royalty of the blood that flows through our veins. That stone was rolled away. And we have a Jesus that is alive and well. He heals you. He touches you. He provides for you. We thank you for the many things that you have done and given us this day, O oh Lord Jesus. For it is in you, O oh Lord, that we stand. It is you, O oh Lord, that we believe. Our faith is strengthened in you. Our strength is through you, O oh Lord Jesus. For our ways are not your ways. And our thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are higher than ours. And we trust and we believe in your word, O oh Lord Jesus. We praise you and thank you for everything need met everything that has been mentioned here lord we Hallelujah. cover with the blood in your holy name we pray Hallelujah. in jesus name come on somebody a big shout of praise for the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. come on a big shout of praise for the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Woo. i feel the holy ghost i feel the holy ghost Come on, get the Holy Ghost on your pew Hallelujah. this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Woo. Hallelujah. Anybody feel the Lord this morning? Woo. Hallelujah. Can you praise him one more time? Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Bless Woo. you. Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well. All right, you can be seated here for a moment. I don't want to sit down on the Lord, though. Amen. But you can be seated just for a moment. Whoo, glory. We're at our halfway mark on our 40 days consecration. Uh, this is the third Sunday. We've got three more Sundays to go through. Then we'll end it on Good Friday. And uh, then would be Easter service. So I appreciate you that have been sacrificing and consecrating. Uh, if you have not been a part of that, you can start now. You can start right now and be a part of that. Yes. Uh, many have given up Facebook. Uh, my daughter-in-law, amazing, has given up sweets. Anybody want that one? Uh -huh. Yeah, let me move on to the next one. Hello? I mean, we, we had a birthday party. She wouldn't even eat the cake, no sweets. And I'm thinking, and we kept saying, hey, you want some? You want some? She said, no. No. But she said, I don't want no sweets. Leave me alone. You know, the devil was just tempting her. Amen. But you can jump on whatever, you know, whatever you enjoy. Give that up for the Lord. Uh, we got about 20 days left of this, and it's been wonderful. And uh, don't forget, we have church tonight. We're fellowship and prayer meeting tonight. And uh, then we got, um, uh, well, I'm letting it out, Brother McGill. Uh, Brother McGill's cooking his tacos tonight, so we're going to have a great time of fellowship. And amen. So we're looking forward to it. Last Sunday, the Shelton's did chili dogs, and it was wonderful. I mean, just, I appreciate all the good people we have here. I want to say as the ushers get ready to come, uh, we're so thankful to have Brittany in the house this morning. Brittany is Scotty and Regina's daughter, and we're honored to have them and the grandkids. And Amen. And uh, Sister Glenda Taylor's in the house this morning. We're honored to have Sister Glenda this morning. That's Brother Bob's mom and Sister Karen's mother-in-law. Amen. So we're just honored to have her in the house. And Linda Crouch, where you at? Linda, we're glad to have you. Amen. This morning. God bless you. All of you. We're so honored to have you this morning in the house of God. Are you ready to give unto the Lord? Are you ready for the Word of God? Yes. Amen. Are you ready for the Word? Ready. You better be. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I come to preach this morning by the help of the Holy Ghost. So let's stand. Going to give you a chance to give. Um, I will say that 
next Sunday, we will be starting our nursery class. And so children, help me, Sister Barr, I want to get this right. From the age two to two to three, we will have a special class for them. So from two to three, we'll have a special class for them. Then next Sunday, we're starting our senior high class back. And uh, so, so, did you see Samantha? She's because she's been doing all of them. Amen. She's the only one that shouted. Did you see that? She said, Whoa, Lord. God's a prayer answering God. Amen. So next Sunday, uh, the senior high class will have a special class for them. And so it's just going and growing. I give God praise for that this morning. Thank you for helping us. Couldn't do it without volunteer help. So praise God. Thank you. Hey, let's pray over our tithes and offerings this morning. And then the children can go in the back for Sunday school. Sister Linda, you want to lead us in prayer this morning? Amen. God bless you. Come on, give unto the Lord. The children can go in the back. Amen. And let's worship one more time, Elder. God bless you. The mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is He. The everlasting Father, the King eternally, the wonderful in wisdom, by whom all things are made, the fullness of the Godhead in Jesus is displayed. It's all in Him, it's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in Him. Well, it's all in Him, it's all. Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, Lord of hosts, the omnipresent Spirit who fills the universe, the act of the high priest, the land for sinners slain, the author of redemption, the glory in his name. It's all in him, it's all in him, the fullness of the Godhead. It's all in Him, the body God in Jesus, and it's all in Him. The Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the living Word in God, the helpless sinner's friend, our wisdom and perfection, our righteousness and power. Yeah, all we need in Jesus, we find His very hour. It's all in Him, it's all in Him. It's all in Him, the mighty God in Jesus, and it's all in Him. Our God for whom we waited will be the glad refrain of His only created. When Jesus comes again, lo, He will come and save us, our King and Priest to be. For He don't dwell our fullness, and Lord of all is He. It's all in Him, it's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in Him. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. I want my good wife to come and leave a word for the Lord this morning. You know, God's just been too good for us, to us, for us not to give him some praise this morning. And so come on up here, darling, and leave a word for the Lord, then we'll get right into the word of God this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm spur of the moment. Everybody else gets warning. He won't tell me because I'm the only one that tells him no. I argue. <laughs> I have to try to think from there to here, try to hear the mind of the Lord. <laughs> but I love the Lord. He is so good to us beyond belief. You know, that's what Maddie and I this week, we've just said, 
You know, it's just, it's almost surreal when you see God begin to work. You pray and pray for things, and when it happens, sometimes you're like, how did that happen, you know? <laughs> but I don't ever want to do that. I want to stop when so many times we have to thank you, God, for working, you know? And he does so much better than what we have plans for. I, you know, try to plan things out for our life and our kids, and I found if we'll leave it in the hands of the Lord, he makes it so beautiful, and he does it right, you know? And it's not always the way we want it. I've had... Um, things in my life and sometimes it's not the easy route we like to I like the easy route I like when God does it I want it done and I want to um, I want the plan set out before me I said you know with my mom and dad the situation we went through probably three years um, things would come up and like I'd have a few months that I would just worry and worry and worry and you know God would show up every time right at the nick of time and I said, you know, can we change this where you kind of give me a little, a little advance, you know? Because, I mean, uh, but like when uh, Dad would have to go in the hospital, we wouldn't have anybody to stay with Mom. Just the right person would come along, you know, at right when we needed them. I mean, every time um, the situation with getting her in the nursing home, I worried and I worked for like a couple years trying to make things happen. And it didn't. But in God's time and when we let Him, He did it just the way it needed to be done. So I'm so thankful for everything he does. You know, you think you'd learn by now to trust him more once you see that he's going to work it out. But I am so thankful. I do just want to give him honor and praise today for everything he's done in our life, everything he's doing in this church and your families. I'm just believing for great things. Amen. <laughs> oh, man, she's hard on me. She said, I'm not that old. You're the one that's old. You just had a birthday. <laughs> well, actually, this coming Friday. But anyhow, praise God. How many of you are thankful for the Lord? I mean, really thankful for the Lord. Amen. When we had the fitness center, Pastor Ed, he's moved on now. He it was pastor of First Baptist Church. And every time I see him, I said, how you doing? He said, better than I deserve. And I'll be honest with you, the first few times it never really clicked. You know, I'm thinking, better than what, what you you know. Um, but I know what he's talking about now. Amen. God's better to us than what we deserve. And I'm so thankful for God's goodness this morning. I want to get into the Bible study. The, uh, don't forget about tonight's prayer meeting. It starts at 5. We'll pray. We sing a few songs and have just five, ten minute word. And then we pray. It's a prayer meeting. And uh, then we'll go in the back and fellowship. So if you can come, you're welcome to come. Let us pray together. I'm not even going to have you stand. I'm just going to pray this morning. Ask the Lord to help me to preach this word, to teach this word. Just if you'll pray with me, will you do that? Amen. Father, you know how, how much I need you this morning for my mind to be clear and for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon me. I yield all that I am, Lord, to the Holy Ghost now to speak through me and give a rhema word to your people. I ask the Lord to open ears now. I command the spirit ears of your people to be open now through the power of the name of Jesus. Our hearts are open, ready to receive the word of God. Now, Lord, anoint us to receive this word. Speak plainly and clearly to us, Lord. Let healing, deliverance, and victory and power come in the life of your people. In Jesus' name we pray and every believer say amen. Praise God. <coughs> Last Sunday, Zach preached. If you didn't get to hear the words, you need to hear it. It was the uh, crisis in our identity, and uh, it was a wonderful message. You need to hear that if you haven't had time to listen to it. The Sunday before that, I taught on types and shadows. I don't know if you remember that or not, but a type and shadow is events and stories in the Old Testament that reveal Jesus Christ and the New Testament plan of salvation. And the last Sunday that I taught, we talked about the Passover and the Red Sea and somebody help me, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. All three of those represent what we have in Jesus Christ. And if you want to learn more, you can go back and listen to that message. But this morning, I want to talk about the bronze serpent on a pole, a rock that flowed with water and the pitcher of grace. I want to talk about a bronze serpent on a pole and a rock that flowed with water and the pitcher of grace. And everyone say glory. 
in the book of John chapter 3 and verse 14. We're going to start with the bronze serpent. Thank you, Nicole, for doing that. Shay's sick and her sister jumped right in to help us today and we appreciate her doing that. In John chapter 3 and verse 14. Now watch what the Lord Jesus says here. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so the son of man be lifted up. As Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness. So must the son of man be lifted now we know he's referring to Calvary here. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now this is shouting material right here. For God so loved the world. God so loved the world. That's shouting material. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's shouting material. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And somebody say glory. In the book of Numbers, chapter 21, you don't have to turn there. The people of God are extremely discouraged. God had brought them out of the bondage of the Egyptians. He's leading them by the cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. And they are on the verge of going into the promised land. They're extremely tired. Their spirit's not right. They're, they're, they're discouraged. And in Numbers it says that the people begin to complain against Moses and God. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt just simply to die in the wilderness? Nothing to eat. Nothing to drink. This is what the people were saying. We're out here in this wilderness. There's nothing to drink, nothing to eat. We're going to die right here in the wilderness. It's hard. It's difficult. It's not easy. And as my wife was testifying, I thought, my, my goodness, here they did it in Numbers 21. We're still doing it today. I still do it. We struggle with, you know, he brings us through one thing, and then you face another, and you say, Lord, where are you? You know, that's where they are. That's exactly where they are. And then, and then I, I like this part. They said, we hate this manna. <laughs> now think about that. The manna was the provision. In fact, Psalm says it's angel's food that God would bring down early in the morning and they would have to go out and, and gather that manna in to eat. It sustained them. It was their food. And they got so bitter in their spirit and so grieved and so discouraged, they finally looked at the miracle and said, Lord, I'm even sick of this miracle. Ain't it amazing how you can go through a season where one, th one time you're thankful for something and the next time the very thing you're discouraged and grieved and bitter about it. Pull up here for a moment. This ain't my subject. Be careful when your miracle, you begin to despise your miracle. Hey, that job's a miracle. Them kids are a miracle. That marriage is a miracle. The church is a miracle. Well, whoo, someone say amen. So they, God, God got grieved with them. In, in verse 6 it says the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and many were bitten and they died. And in verse 27 it says that all Israel came to Moses and Aaron and said, hey listen, we've sinned. I want you to pray for us. We need your help. Poisonous snakes is biting everybody and everybody's dying. We need help. And in verse 8 the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, make a replica of the poisonous snake. Attach it to a pole. And all who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze. Attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Someone say amen. Now this is too important. I'm going to let these guys get seated somewhere, all right? Can you help me? All right, there you go. Thank you so much. So everyone that was bitten by the poisonous snakes, they, they were dying. And the Lord said, what I want you to do, I want you to make a replica of this snake. Who have, watch this. Whoever is bitten, if they will look at that bronze snake upon the pole, they will live. Someone say amen. 
Now watch this, watch. The people were bitten by death. When they got bit by them snakes, they were dying. Somebody say bitten by death. When they turned their heart to the serpent on the pole, death was rebuked back and those who were dying lived. Oh. They, listen, watch this. They had to believe that the serpent on the pole was greater than the death that was in them. Oh, are you hearing me? So, listen, when they came to the serpent with poison in them, they came to the serpent with poison in them. It's just like you coming to Jesus with poison in you. Jesus said, listen, just like Moses held up the serpent in the wilderness, those who were bitten with death and poison in them, when they looked upon the serpent that was lifted up, they lived. Jesus said, I'm going to be lifted just like that serpent in the wilderness. And whoever looks upon me, whoever comes to me, amen, that spirit of death will be rebuked back and you shall live. Now watch this, pull up here. Listen, they, they, they had to look upon the, upon the serpent on that pole with poison in them. You got to come to Jesus with the poison in you. You got to come, listen, no one ever gets saved that is not a sinner. No one ever comes to Jesus who is not a sinner. If you come to Jesus, you come as a sinner. You come with poison in you. And look, pull up here. That's why some of you struggle. You want to get the poison out, then you want to come to Jesus. You want to deal with the issues and the bondages in your life, then you're going to come to Jesus. It don't work like that. You got to come with the stink and the poison and death in you, and you got to come to the Lord Jesus just like. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to camp right here. I got to hurry, but I got, I'm going to camp right here because you got to deal with that. Some of you are sitting back and won't really commit to the Lord because you know you got, you've been bitten by a poisonous snake and you're dying. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't know. I'm going to fix it. Then I'm going I'm I'm to start going to church. It don't work like that. you got to come just like you are. Listen, look, look, look. When they looked at that snake lifted up on that pole, they had to believe that that snake was more powerful than the death that was in them. They had to believe that that snake could save them in their present condition. When you come to the Lord Jesus, you got to believe Jesus can save you just as you are. Now, so, oh Lord, I got, I got to move, but I really want to stay right here. Because some, there's some in here. You don't believe that. You don't believe Jesus can save you like you are. You feel like you got to change. I got to get this right. I got to get that right. Can I tell you, Jesus saves you just like you are, but he won't leave you like you are. And if you're expecting to get the poison out before you come to Jesus, you're going to die in the wilderness and you're going to die with that poison in you. But if you come on and say, Jesus, here I am. I need your healing. I need your salvation. Oh, you better praise him this morning. Woo! He saves you just as you are. Deal with it right. Hey, let, 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 uh, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. What do you do? Let, what do you do when you look at the snake? <laughs> and you still got symptoms of poison in you. You keep on living. You keep coming back to Jesus. If you got to pray the prayer, if you got, listen, if you got to get saved again every day, 
Then you come back up and you get saved every day and say, Lord, I got this monkey on me that I can't get rid of. I've tried this. I've did this. I've tried that. And I can't get out. But Lord, I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. And here I am again Monday morning praying, asking you to forgive me and help me and bring me out of this fucking fire. Someone say amen. I'd rather come back every day and say, Jesus, forgive me and save me. i come back Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because somewhere I'm going to get my miracle. Somewhere I'm going to get my... And you ain't going to get it if you ain't here. I'd rather you come in crippled. At least there's the potential for a miracle. Well... The devil wants you to get healed out there. He's a liar. There's only healing when you get up underneath the cross of Jesus. Well, all right, let me move. I don't want to. I don't want to. Someone say amen. So that's the serpent on the pole. Let's talk about the rock that flowed with water. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. Nicole's going to put it up there for us. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. You see the typology there? And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Watch. And they all drank that same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ so he's referring to the rock that Moses smit in the book of Exodus once again the people are complaining there's no water no food you brought us out here to this wilderness to die what are we gonna do and the Lord or Moses went to the Lord and said what am I gonna do these people are thirsty and there's no water And the Lord speaks to Moses and said, Go up before the people and take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smote the river, talking about the Red Sea. Take it in thy hand and go. Watch. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock and horde, and thou shalt smite the rock. Somebody shout smite. That's important. And there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of Israel. Now, Moses smote the rock, and life-giving water flowed out of that rock. (laughs) The people were tired, they're discouraged, they're weak. And when Moses smote that rock, that water flowed out. It refreshed the people. It caused the people to live. It strengthened the people. This is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he was smitten on Calvary, amen, he wasn't just smitten on Calvary, but when he died on Calvary, there came a river flowing that causes you to live. It'll strengthen you. It'll refresh you. Oh, someone say amen. Now, Jesus said this. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Watch, the water never came out of the rock until it was smitten. Jesus had to go to the cross before the Holy Ghost could come. Watch, 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 watch. The, watch, pull up here. The people are murmuring. They're complaining. Their spirit ain't right. Why did you bring us out here in this wilderness to die out here? Why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? Now, if that had been me or you, we said, you die in the wilderness, you won't. I'm moving on. I ain't putting up with that attitude. Watch this. The water flowed out of the rock, not because the people were right, but the people needed the water to live. 
And so some of us are sitting here thinking, okay, if I do this or I do that, then I can get this Holy Ghost or I can get the refreshing of the Spirit of God. Can I tell you, when your spirit is wrong, that water will flow because you need the water to be strengthened and to be healed and to be refreshed. I didn't get no help on that. Some of you just kind of said the thing, I don't know about that. When that water came out of that, watch this, watch, 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 watch. That water, that water flowed out of that rock because of Moses' obedience, not the people. And the water of the Holy Ghost flows out because of the obedience of Jesus, not your obedience. You know what I'm telling you? If you're thirsty, you can drink. There's water flowing this morning. There's water flowing. Ah, there's water flowing this morning. It will refresh you. Church should refresh you. Church should strengthen you. I was tuckered. I was in a bad spirit. In fact, this morning I got so mad I just hung up the phone. Anyway, and, but you get to church, that spirit of God will refresh. Why? Because the river's flowing this morning. There's healing, there's refreshing, there's life, there's joy, there's peace in the river of the Holy Ghost. Okay, all right, I got to quit hollering. In John, Jesus said, I will give you living water. Somebody say living water. What, what, what do you mean living water? In Ezekiel, he said, I seen a river coming out of underneath the door of the altar. And everywhere that river flowed, everything that it touched, it caused it to live. The fish lived. The trees lived everywhere the river went. It caused people to live. It caused things to live. Jesus said, I'm not giving you dead water. I'm giving you living water this morning. And everywhere that spirit moves and whoever it touches, they shall live. They shall be strengthened. They shall be encouraged. They shall have life. Mm. Get ready. Get ready. He said, if you drink of this water here, talking about the natural water, you will thirst again. But whoever drinks of this water that I shall give him, he shall never thirst again. And it shall be in him a well of living water springing up. Hey, church, if you got the Holy Ghost, you got a well of living water springing. That's why sometimes we act peculiar. We act strange. Why? There's something on the inside of me. It's got me moving. I got to praise God. It's a well of living water. Anybody got any living water in them? Anybody got any living water in them? You ought to stand and give God praise. I thank God for the well of living water. Give him a big shout of praise. I've been touched. Oh, oh. Somebody say glory. Oh, you can be seated. If that water that came out of that rock strengthened and encouraged the people. How much more that water that comes out of Jesus Christ, that Holy Ghost. Hello. Can I show you something real quick about the rock? They traveled 39 years in the wilderness getting ready to go in the promised land. Same, same, same situation. No water. They're complaining. <laughs> hey, Sister Parr, we can't be upset when the church is all, you know, people complaining. They just, they just do that. And I'm not even Moses and you ain't Aaron. I mean, if they complain with Moses and Aaron, I know they're going to complain with little Bud and Chris. They get no help. So they were, they were complaining. Not happy. And so Moses, he goes back to the Lord and said, Lord, what am I going to do? He said, I want you to get your rod. Watch. 
Watch, 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 pull up. And I want you to speak to the rock. And water is going to come up out of that rock. Now, the first time he had to spike the rock. This time, God tells him, I want you to speak to the rock. And Moses went to that rock. He called all the people out. Here's what he said. You stiff-necked, rebellious people. I tell you, God's going to give you water. He hit that rock twice. He was so mad. Watch. And the Bible said, and water flowed out of the rock. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, there's some preaching in that. And then God looked right at Moses and said, because you dishonored me, you will not go to the promised land. Now watch this, watch. What caused the water to flow the first time was Jesus dying on the cross. To get the water to flow again, you ain't got to take Jesus back to the cross. All you got to do is speak to the rock. All you got to do is praise the rock. All you got to do is lift up the name of Jesus. He ain't got to go back to the cross. All you got to do is open your mouth and call on the name of Jesus. Somebody give him a big shout of praise. Let the water flow. Let the water let the water flow let the water flow let the water flow come on praise him let the water flow come on praise him let the water flow you can't keep your mouth shut and the water flow you got to pray speak to the rock and the water will flow somebody say glory I said somebody say glory I'm going to give it this I'm, I'm, I'm moving the water flowed Not because of their obedience. It flowed because the Lord knew they needed the life and the strength in them. God will give you things you don't even deserve. I got it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Watch. Watch. I was in a valley. Did you know pastor gets in a valley? No, I'm not in a valley. I'm just changing mountaintops. You just hold on, baby. That's my testimony. <laughs> but I was in a valley changing mountaintops. <laughs> and I was praying, oh God, please help me. Please bless me. Please, whatever it was. I can't, ever, I can't remember what it was now. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said that, when you're doing good, do you think I bless you because you're doing good? He said, do you think the blessing comes because you're doing good? He said, In your, when you think you're doing good, I still bless you and you're unworthy. So when you think you're unworthy, it doesn't change the fact that if you think you're unworthy or you think you're worthy, it doesn't change the fact that it still comes by grace and mercy. So the water will flow. God's goodness will flow even when you don't deserve it. Why? Because he loves you and he wants the best for you. I, I got to move. You didn't get here because of your ability. You got here because of God's long suffering, his mercy, his goodness. If it had not been for the Lord, we wouldn't even be here. So we dealt with the serpent on the pole. We dealt with the rock where water flowed out. Third thing, and I'm finished. I want to talk to you about the picture of grace. And I'll be so, so quick on this that if you started getting your purse ready, I'd be through before you got your purse up. That's how quick, that quick. The picture of grace. In 2 Samuel, David, please hear this, so important. David said, is there anyone of the household of Saul that I may bless for Jonathan's sake? Jonathan was Saul's son and David and Jonathan were in a covenant and David is king and he said, is there anyone that I can bless because of Jonathan's sake? And they came back and said, there's an old lame man, lame on his feet, crippled on his feet. His name is Mephibosheth. He's living in Lodabar. 
David said, I want you to fetch him and bring him here. Mephibosheth couldn't even walk in. He had to be carried in. And when he got there, King David said, I'm going to bless you for Jonathan's sake. Everything that you've lost, I'm going to restore. You read the story, he said, everything you lost, I'm going to restore. I'm going to restore the land of Saul. I'm going to put the blessing on your life. And you're going to eat at the king's table all the days of your life. You want to see a picture of grace? When they carried Mephibosheth in and set him at the table, the table covered his lameness. He looked like all the other boys. He was eating at the king's table. He didn't walk in. He was carried in. But grace will cover your lameness. Cover, grace will cover your issues. Grace gives you things that you can't walk into. I just got to shout for a moment because there's still some lameness in my life. And if it had not been for grace and mercy, I wouldn't be sitting at the king's table. You ought to stand and give him praise on this Sunday morning. You ought to stand and give him praise. Let me ask you something. Here's the, I got to, I'm, I'm through, I got you standing. Do you know what Mephibosheth said? It's so good to see you this morning, I'm so glad you're here. She takes care of me when I pull up to Unico. Now, she never gives me no more, but at least she don't give me no less. So thank you, sister. When, when Mephibosheth was sitting at the table, you know what he said? How are you going to bless a dead dog like me? I'm lame. Some of us were sitting at the king's table. And we won't eat because you didn't walk in here. You were fetched. You know your feet are crippled. You know you got issues. And so everybody else sitting down eating, laughing, passing bread. They're not drinking no Cokes, but they are drinking some tea. Sister, they have got some tea because we ain't drinking Cokes. So they're drinking tea. And watch this. Watch, watch. Please see, watch this. And I'm through. I, I gotta, I'll, I'll quit right now. Mephibosheth brought his Lodabar attitude into the king's house. He's still seeing himself as he was when he was in Lodabar. And grace is saying, you're at the king's table. My grace has covered your lameness. I have fetched you. I have called you. I'm going to bless you. But you got to get rid of that old mind. You're not who you used to be. If you're at the king's table, put your head up. Give God praise. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for his goodness. You got to learn how to eat when you know you're not worthy. You got to learn how to enjoy things when you know you don't deserve it. <laughs> oh, oh, better than we deserve. Better than we deserve. Lift your heart to the Lord. Lift your heart to the Lord. Hey, sister, I tell you what's holding you back. You. Your heart, your mind. You want to get the poison out before you come to Jesus. You want to accept the fact that the water flows because of the obedience of Moses. Come on. And now you're at the king's table and all you can see is the lameness in your feet and the issues and you're dirty and you're not worthy. Hey Amen. It's, it's choking you to death. I've got a word from the Holy Ghost this morning. His grace is sufficient. Pull up to the table and eat. Pull up and accept what Christ has done. You're not, listen, you're not in Lodabar anymore. You're in the house of the king.
We're in the house of the king. You're in the house of the king. I pray, Holy Ghost, come and heal hearts right now. All over the building, can you just close your eyes and lift your heart in prayer? You may want to lift your hand to the Lord. Brother Shelton, if you guys don't mind to come right now, come quickly if you don't mind. Zach, if you guys don't mind, Regina. Come on, just, just lift your heart to the Lord just for a moment. Just for a moment. There's healing in the house for you this morning. There's salvation. You say, Brother Poor, I got poison in me. Come, come to Jesus. <laughs> you say, Brother Poor, my spirit rain, it, rain, it ain't right. I'm critical about everything. Come to Jesus this morning. The water's flowing this morning. Somebody ought to come to the Lord this morning. Come to the Lord this morning. I speak this over someone now through the authority of the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, sever their past now. Sever where they came from. Sever them from their faults and their mistakes. Sever them from the things that haunt their mind. That keep them trapped in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Sever that now through the power of the name of Jesus. I hear the Holy Ghost say, set my people go. Let my people go. I hear the Holy Ghost say, let my people go. He's opening your grave. He's causing you to live. All you need to do is as an act of faith, you need to just step from where you are. You need to come down to the front and say, Jesus, I accept what you're doing in my life and I thank you for it. You need to step out. It, 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 listen, it will just solidify. It will, it will seal what the Holy Ghost is doing in your heart right now. The simple act of stepping out and saying, Lord, I receive this this morning. I receive what you're doing. Now, Lord, you know I'm still late. But oh, I want to eat at your table. I want to feast in your presence. I need that water in my life. I need that water in my life. I'm fixing to sit down. But whatever's holding you back right now, whatever thoughts are saying, now you don't need to do that. You don't need to, you've done that. You don't, you've done that before. Listen, you need to push all that to the side and receive something new from the Lord this morning. You need to receive something new from the Lord this morning. Say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I thank God he's my serpent on the pole. I thank God he's the rock that the water flowed out of. I thank God he's the grace that covers me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come quickly. Come. Come on, church. Come quickly. Come. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly, just walk down and let the Holy Ghost seal it. Go ahead, Brother Shelton, let's begin to sing, if you don't mind, as, as people begin to walk down and pray, just you and Jesus, saved come on. Saved by grace, yes. I've my been saved by grace, yes, thank you, Lord. my name is in the book thank you, Lord. of life, thank you, Lord. my sins are washed away. Come on, anybody else, come on. Saved by come grace. on, hallelujah. I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. I was alone in the darkness. I could not find my way. Then Jesus shined his light on me and turned my night to day. Saved by grace. I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life, my sins are washed away. Saved by grace, I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. When I reach that city, the gates swing open wide. I'm going to sing redemption story of how you brought me to the other side. Saved by grace, I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life, my sins are washed away. Saved by grace, I've been saved by grace. 
not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. Saved by grace. I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life. My sins are washed away. Saved by grace. I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. I was alone in the darkness. I could not find my way. Till Jesus shone his light on me and turned my night to day. Saved by grace. I've been saved by grace. The book of life, my sin law was the way. Saved by grace, I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. When I reach that city, the gates swing open wide. I'm gonna sing redemption story. Of how you brought me from the other side Saved by grace I've been saved by grace My name is in the book of life My sins are washed away Saved by grace I've been saved by grace It's not what I deserve But I'm saved by grace on hallelujah come on church come on church Thank you, Jesus. do you know how much it pleases the Lord to come and put your faith completely in the Lord Jesus Christ and what yes. he did on that cross yes. do you know how much it pleases the Lord to say you know what Man, I got so many things I need help on, Lord. But I'm believing in your salvation and I'm believing in you to help me and bring me and deliver me. And, and just look around you. Look at all the testimonies of what God has done in the lives of others. Yes. He said, look at the cloud of witnesses. For if God did it for them, he'll do it for you. Yes. He'll, he'll, no, he'll do it for you. But you got to come as you are. You got to come with the poison in you. Oh, thank God for such a great salvation. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, come on, give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Oh, Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you if, you, if you are having trouble finding your joy in your walk, then you don't understand grace. Because I'm telling you, once you get an understanding of this message this morning, that's how you can walk in joy and in peace. Because you know that He saved you with His grace, and He's keeping you with His grace. Come on, that's why we have peace this morning. That's why we have joy this morning. We know He was strong enough to save us, and He's strong enough to keep us. I'm telling you, the Word was good this morning. If you will, pray with me this morning over this Word. Father, we thank You, O oh God, for that grace, Lord. We thank you for that mercy that you extend and renew every morning. God, we just ask for a sensitivity to your voice and your spirit. Lord, draw us to you. Make us hungry for your presence. Oh, Lord, we ask you to open our eyes and our hearts to understand your grace. Lord, to understand your mercy, your anointing, and your power. Lord, let us see your blood. Father, reveal your grace to us. We just ask you to go with us and keep us. Lord, put your hand upon us. Lead us and guide us and send your favor before us and behind us. God, we give you all the praise this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, come on, somebody give him another hand clap this morning.